Okay, guys, we're here with the Guest Life Podcast. We've got the absolute pleasure for episode 11 of having Amy Ledeen on our show. Um, we're so happy to have her. We're going to talk fitness. We're going to talk mindset. We're going to get into coaching. Um, we're so happy to have her on, and uh, we're excited to meet her and see about a little bit about her story. Thank you. I'm excited. So, guys, a little bit about the podcast. We're talking about people in Hamilton um, and surrounding areas, like-minded business attitudes, um, you know, huge part of the community. Amy is a great example of that. We're going to hear a lot about her story and kind of how she got started, how her and her husband are taking her, you know, business worldwide um, growth, as well as like some of the struggles that she's gone through. So, you know, we're going to start off with a little bit about Amy and, and tell me about Lean Bodies Consulting and how your business got started. Well, um, Lean Bodies Consulting, we own an online coaching um, company. And I say coaching because while it is a fat loss, you know, company transformation coaching, you know, we try to teach people that you're you're really paying for a retainer for a coach versus a program because the the program itself is like the byproduct, right? How to get there. But I'm going to, I'm going to coach you to get there. So we've been in business for 15 years. My husband actually started um, the business first and I had a separate business, same exact coaching, but I lived in the United States and he was here in Hamilton. And so for, I think prior to me, you know, coming in, Eric had had an online business for about five years. And then I started based on his referral. He had a massive, you know, wait list. And I think social proof is what always helps, right? Like if you can show that you get results, you know, he had at one point over 300 people on a wait list. Wow. So he, you know, reached out to me and, you know, we, we weren't together at the time and was like, listen, if I start sending you like a handful of referrals, you know, what could you do? And I was a boot camp instructor. Like I owned a boot camp business. I worked for the U S Navy for many years. So I'd never been online. This was a huge pivot for me, but a passion of mine. So I was like, okay. And, um, over the next few years built up my brand, he built up his brand and then, you know, we got married and I moved up here and then we, we merged. We realized we had two companies that were pretty much competing. I mean, you know, on, on social media, when you're looking at ads and Facebook and all that, we're like, okay, we're competing for the same audiences. Let's merge together. So I went from being in the entrepreneurial space by myself to then becoming a partner, which was, you know, really interesting because you've got usually two alphas, you know, together. And um, we've learned like strengths and, and weaknesses and how we both now have certain areas in, in, in the business. But we've over the years have had anywhere from a team, you know, no team to a team of nine. And all of our coaches work all over the world. So we work remotely, we've trained them and we, we kind of have like a, a requirement. They need to be, they need to have been a client because you've got to be sold out on the philosophy. And I think you need to have success in that philosophy because you're, you know, your marketing is your beliefs. And so if you got here in a different way, I already know we're going to have some issues. And this is all through trial and error. Like we didn't have these rules at first and people would come on and then they take their own way on it. And we're, and we're really big on our philosophy is our, it's our reputation. It's our brand. We don't want to starve someone to get there, you know? So we've seen over the years that they have to be like a long-term client, you know, or someone that has been through our system because I can teach anything, you know, like you can really teach the things, but they've got to have that. And, you know, they have to have a growth mindset because I've learned over the years that it's not so much your skill. You can teach skill, but you can't teach core values. So, you know, we, we really try to hire now based on that. Like, are we aligned with our core values and have they been through our system? And then over the years, you know, I'd say most, we have 95% are females. So we have a big female audience. Um, Eric started in contest prep. So muscle tech was actually here in Mississauga. He worked for muscle tech for years. It's so funny. He was the hydroxy cut transformation person. So any transformation you saw back in the day that was hydroxy cut, that was Eric. And he used to get paid to go on these big campaigns to help these people like lose it. And he's done fun stuff like Bridezilla's. He, he did the coach, all the nutrition for Mrs. America. So we did a lot of like finish line type coaching. And, and we kind of now call it outside in coaching where the person is going to, they want to get there at all costs, you know, and for years that was fun for both of us. We loved showcasing your skill, right? Because you get to, you know, see at the end, manipulate things to get them really lean for the stage. And it's really though about self, like, you know, we were kind of at the ego place of like, it's me, my doing my work. Right. And then we had, um, a few years ago, uh, a coach that worked for us that it just went totally south and we realized 
how much impact we had on our clients. And we actually stopped doing contest prep. Like we completely pivoted at that point. We're like, we're no longer going to take on competitors. And now we work more on really leveling you up because personal development and like fitness, they're actually complete parallels. That's why I think you see a lot of people that are, you know, in the personal development space, they're fit, they're in shape because they realize that how you look on the outside is how you feel on the inside and that you showing up for yourself is a form of love. It is. Discipline is love. So we've over the years, you know, we're probably the OGs in online space. Like we were before there was Facebook, you know, we have a forum that actually like you can go and ask questions. Eric used to be a moderator over at the Oxygen Magazine forums. That's actually how I even found him was he was just someone that would answer questions and you know it was at first by accident that we did these things and then of course later in business we realized the reason why we've been able to have a seven-figure business for so many years is we've always given back we've always just given everything away for free I mean I remember when I was creating my first cookbook Eric came to me and he's like just put all your recipes on the blog and I go then who's going to, you know, buy it? And he, at that point, introduced me to Gary Vee. And he's like, you need to see, you know, so I started reading his stuff, how they'll still come. Like if you just share all your tools, everything. And so I literally gave every single recipe that was in my cookbook. If they wanted to go look for it, they would find it and ended up crushing it at the launch because people were just so excited to give back, you know? And so over the years, while at first it was probably accidental, we both realized that the reason why we've been able to stay at the top of the game is we always, it's always about what we can give, how we can serve, how we can teach, because you know, on the back end, it comes back to you. Yeah. You know, such, so. such a good outlook too. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know you had a cookbook. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not going on the forums because they're probably a little bit dated, but we'll yeah. have to get the cookbook. Oh out. yeah. My kids still think of, cause I mean, I, I came from like, we were printing those cookbooks like in a printer. So my older kids that are 21 and 17, when they see the original cookbook, they're like, Oh my gosh, that brings back nightmares of printing them out and literally sorting. And I binded my own cookbooks for the first, probably the first 5,000 cookbooks I sold. We did ourselves in my living room, you know, with no money. (laughs) And that's why we're doing the podcast because we have to talk about the beginning. Yeah. And you have to, you know, I think that's, you know, you're, I remember a coach once telling us that your struggle time, you'll be so grateful for. It will be so many lessons because while we dominated for so many years, we went through probably a two year dip a couple of years ago where not, I mean, maybe like a 40% loss. Like it was, you know, a big change. Our, our team, you know, got smaller and it was the first time that, you know, it, was on the down. And, you know, they always say, if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. And so we were like, we needed to go back to the drawing board. But our our coach had said, he's like, this is going to be such a blessing. And we're like, no, it's not. What are you talking about? You know, at the time you're not happy about it, but it really did make us sit back and one, I mean, fix our structures and systems and really see what we wanted. But two, you know, reminding you of your, of your startup and where you came from and, and always staying on your game with that. Like you have to be improvising, innovating, always be willing to change, be open. Whereas we'd had a system for so long that, you know, I don't think we ever thought it would be um, breakable. And then you see something like COVID happen and you just always have to be thinking, you know, alternate things. You got to be on your toes and you got to be creative. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, people listening, it's like working in your business or working on your business. And if you're working in it, sometimes you get distracted by what's actually happening around you. Um, and you, you know, you get taken away and I I get caught in that all all the time. Um, but it's about, you know, being self-aware that you're catching yourself. Yes. Right. It's okay that it's happening. Totally. Totally. And we, I try now to, when we hired a coach a couple years ago that taught us how to separate that on and in, because we both still love the coaching, you know, at at the core of it all. That's like what, especially Eric, like loves, loves, loves the coaching. And so, you know, you got to be good at both if you want to continue to do that and then balance it. You know, you got to be able to put enough on your business and it can't just be the grind in, you know? And, And how do you find that when you scale up? Like say, are you at nine now? No, it's still like, Oh, what do you mean nine? Not yet. You said you had nine uh, team members? No, we have a team of one, two, three, five. Five. Five now. right now. Yeah, yeah. So and that fluctuates based on uh, what parameters? 
Well, based on, I mean, demand clients, but for us, really, it came down to we we small we made it smaller intentionally because we were like we can scale in other ways. The scaling doesn't need to be on you know a coach and then they get X amount of clients. We've had to innovate. Like, okay, how can we you know if our if our goal is to make more impact. You have lower price point things. You know, we now have like what's called a training VIP group on Facebook where people that can't afford maybe say our one-to-one coaching, now they can get our training coaching at $50 a month. So we have found ways to, and that just happened through COVID. We had a really crazy, you know, it was like when COVID hit, ours is a luxury service. So most people are then, that's the first thing to go, right? Is I don't need my fat loss coach. You know, I don't need that. And so our, our coach at that point had said, listen, everybody needs to just kind of know that the next couple months you need to just serve your community. And so we were like, all right, let's go all in. We, what we did was we provided an at home training program for free. So Eric put together a program that all you needed was like a set of dumbbells and bands, like very minimal equipment. And our, our, our audience, like our avatar is an intermediate to advance. So it was, you know, really offering something. And we didn't even so much as ask for an email. It was nothing. We literally just said, you want it, we'll send it to you. And so, and and we were like, we're just going to, do this for a couple months and we were showing up every day doing videos and everything and then we decided to offer this we were like wow people really like this they really love the power of the community we're all training together and we'd never done that before and so that's how we came up with our vip group and it was a seventy thousand dollar launch like so we were like oh my gosh giving back like truly giving back and from the heart of knowing you want to help i mean that was where it came from for both of us we were like man like missing out on your gym time like this is some people's life like this is a big corner of their day and it makes them feel good what can we do for our community that's stuck at home and so that's why we came out with it and then you know yeah it was cool yeah it's amazing and and you know what like it's not a bad thing I mean sometimes you feel guilty when you uh, profit off a give Right. I know I do sometimes like, you yes, know, you, you're marketing, whether you're doing um, we're doing a food drive right now. We're getting a lot of, you know, feedback from marketing it. But it's like, well, how are people going to give to it if they don't know where to go and they don't know who to give back to? So sometimes you feel a little bit guilty is like, should I be marketing that I'm doing something nice? But I think, you know, at the end of the day, you're doing something nice. That's just it. And it's like, like don't feel like... don't feel bad. Don't overthink it. It's just it, it's such a good feeling, especially giving back to the people that are giving to you and um, in a hard time and being you know thankful and grateful that we're in the situation to be able to give. Totally, totally. And, and that was what was so fun for us was when we did offer this and we were like, you know, now we're going to you know sell something. People were actually thanking us like it was the opposite. Like, no, everyone was like, what? I can't believe it's going to be so low. Like, we're like, wow, this is because, you know, they know the heart behind it. And I think that's important too, is it's just that universal law of like, you want to, you want to give and in return, it will come back somewhere, may not come back right at this moment, but if you always have the giving heart, you know, and knowing that, then you just have to kind of put your blinders on and go, I know my heart. You might get someone that will reach out and be like, oh, you're profiting off of, and you just have to ignore that, you know? (laughs) That's that's the best way to put it. Let's just ignore those people. (laughs) Haters mean you're making it. Yeah. You're (laughs) something right if everybody's talking about you. Yeah. Um, That's just, and and then, you know, it's just amazing. It doesn't surprise me at all that that's something that you've been doing. Um, I think it's great. What, uh, What got you into, you know, before you met Eric, how did you get into doing this kind of work like what made you think you were an entrepreneur or believe you're an entrepreneur or I you know what I grew up in an entrepreneur home so that my parents owned a grocery store my um my grandparents actually owned four businesses and they gave them to each of their children when they got out of college and um so I watched my parents own a grocery store I saw my aunt and uncle owned a clothing store and my other uncle owned a hardware store and from a young age my grandpa had me do a lemonade stand and taught me all about profits and like I remember making my first money and him come and taking like a bunch of it and I went what? And he goes, this was for the lemonade that you, you know, you took a loan from me, Amy, this morning and you didn't know it, but you know, cause I was excited. And so it was like my first experience. And I just loved the, what I saw was a lot of flexibility. I mean, yes, my parents worked a lot. I think when you work in your business, but I just saw opportunity now, didn't know how that was going to happen later. I did start my personal training. Like I'd done little small things 
after college, but I lost, you know, mine was experience. You know, I weighed 230 pounds. I was really heavy most of my life. Like my nickname was piglet growing up. So when I lost the hundred pounds, started working for the military. Um, from there, that experience got me really excited about change with people. And I'd see them in the gym working hard. And I loved that. And then I'm like, yeah, but I'm not with them the other 23 hours of the day. This is all nutrition. How can I get into this? Found Eric. And you know, they say success leaves clues. So I already knew that Eric was very successful in the industry and didn't know how we'd ever even connect in this way. But I started reading everything of his, like every article he read, I mean, that he'd written, I'd find it on other websites. Like I when and I'd hired him and I'd have like all my programming. I'd look at all of it. I'd study it. I'd try to really see because, you know, I'm like, if he's doing good at this, I need to learn. And I'd ask him lots of questions, you know, from there I created something for his business. So I was like, Hey, I have something that might help your clients even more. And, you know, I think it's like finding, finding a mentor that you can add value to. So then from there, he gave me a blog on his, he said, you can start blogging for my business. And I'm like, awesome. You know, so it, it really just started through my own experience. Like I feel like a lot of people, not that you have to, but you know, your beliefs do become your marketing. So for me, it's really, really, it's just a passion that I, I feel like I'm playing all day because I already know the benefits that people will get from it. Yeah. So, you know, and then diving more into it, realizing how most businesses don't stay open after five years. So then that got me really into business. Like, I'm like, I got to learn more about strategies behind this. And, you know, why do some businesses, you know, fold and others don't? What makes a sustainable business? And, you know, it wasn't really until probably five years ago that we got into entrepreneur stuff because Eric only, ex we only expanded due to demand. It wasn't because we both wanted big businesses. It was just wow, I mean, now we have, you know, I had the same problem he did when I started. I had to hire, you know, three more ladies on my team because I'm like, I have this huge wait list of 50 people. All right, let me hire more coaches, you know. Yeah. That's so, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> well, in your, pa your passion, you're like, you know, yeah. it's coming out of you. And people do, I love, you know, when people are like, oh, you, you know, because they see that I'm fit or they see, they don't realize that it comes from a place of, my own experience, you know, I was in my family, I was the one person that was, you know, overweight that struggled with it. Not I watched my mom be a struggle. Uh, she struggled all of my life to the point that she had a gastric bypass. So for me, that was when I finally saw the link to mindset that I was like, man, you know, it's not that most people have this strategy problem. We all know how to not eat like an a-hole. I didn't know if I could, yeah, 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 yeah. you know, you know how to not eat your face off. So it's not that so much. It's, it's finding the mindset behind it, reminding you of your why. So we just, over the years, I mean, I just got obsessed with, you know, seeing the correlation that I'm like, okay, yeah, you do have to have the right strategy, but even with the right strategy, why do people fail? Why is it that I can tell you exactly what to eat and, and, you know, and then realizing, you know, what was my separator? Because for me, I, it's been now 17 years since I lost all of that weight. And the stats are that 5% will keep their weight loss, 95 gain it back within three years. That's like just a national stat, which is pretty scary because it's already hard enough to get there. So only 5% keep it. And it's because you have to change your identity. Like you really have to become that person. And it's no different than like, say the person that wins the lottery that loses it all. And you're like, how did they lose it all? Because they didn't change who they were. And so that it just, it vanishes. Like you lose it. No different than the person that like loses the weight, say for a competition. Yeah. The reason why they don't look like that maybe two years later is they just did it for a season, right? They didn't do it to like really change. Whereas for me, it was, it came from a place of, I want to be a better mom. You know, I wanted to have more energy. I was a really, you know, I had a moment at the park where I was really overweight and really lazy. And I looked around and I saw that because I had a toddler at the time and I'm like, okay, the fit moms are out on the park. Like they're playing soccer with their kids. I took a look around at who was sitting on the park bench and it was most of us were struggling with our weight. You know, we weren't active and I'm like, okay, I don't want to be park bench mom. So for me, it was you know, just, I think that was my drive was just my own experience. I think that's great. Like, yeah. I, I've, I've struggled from the same thing and, you know, I, I lost uh, my heaviest, I was 260 and then I wow. went, I lost 60 pounds, but it wasn't like, 
again, it was exactly what you said not to do. Like it wasn't a lifestyle change. And uh, recently, like I've been vegetarian and it's been way more consistent because mm. you're not doing it for, you know, I want to just make this extreme change. Right. You're doing for health. You have a deeper why. You know, I mean, yeah. that we, we usually say that we, we do a screening call now. We used to not do this. We would just let anyone come on. And then we realized that. I mean, one, I don't want to take your money if you're not going to see success. So there's a couple of things I need to ask you. And a lot of it is like, what's your why? Because if it's just to have rock hard abs, like, don't get me wrong, I'll get you there. You can have them. But if your why is not for a bigger reason, we'll just be there for a season and you'll be back here next year. You know, I've said it to, and people get offended when I say that, like, I will not. I'm like, yes, you will. Like you're right now only motivated by an outcome. You're not motivated just because it's the like a good thing to do for yourself, you know? Well, and consistency is everything. Like, I mean, yeah. um, even with COVID, I think happening, we're just, we're shooting this during COVID right now. So um, we're hopefully on the tail end of it uh, yes. here in Hamilton, <laughs> stage three. Um, but when we talk about consistency and those, you know, the three months and the six months of seeing the results, it's like, you know, it's that hard work and that hard work and that hard work. Um, I recently had to take a week off for some personal reasons. And I remember I was so self-aware of that week of not working on the business. Yeah, we got through it. Never, my team did an amazing job at, mm -hmm. at handling, you know, the daily tasks. But I said, wow, I got to pick up my pace on the weekends now to make up for that week that I'm, I don't want to feel in three months. Right. Right. Exactly. And I yeah. think it's it being, being aware of some of the repercussions of, you know, slacking off or eating the chips or, you know, it, especially in business, you know, having a lazy week or, you know, you go golfing three times or you didn't put in that extra effort or you're not, you yeah. know, it's not always hours. Right. I find, uh, especially cause I really want to talk about your morning routines, yeah. especially <laughs> with the, with the family that I see on, uh, on social media all the time doing, but, um, you know, I think with the with everything going on, like having that consistency is just so, so important. It is. It's habits. Like we tell our kids all the time. I mean, we're big on teaching them because, you know, behaviors are caught, not taught. You can teach it until you're blue in the face, but your kids or anyone around you, it's really what you, they're going to model. You know, so many times I'm always like, it's more, I'm doing this more for the habit. Like, I don't want to stop it because I know that the habit is easier to keep up once you're going and knowing that it can be small, like it can be two minutes. It can be five minutes. It doesn't have to be, you know, I have a crazy morning and evening routine, but it didn't start that way. You know, it started with just one thing, you know? Up. Yeah, exactly. No snooze. You know, I, we always say like, and anchoring that, like I always tell people, tell yourself that by hitting snooze. You're, you're telling your dreams that they don't matter. You're telling yourself that all the goals that you've had don't matter by hitting that because you agreed to get up at that time, hence you turning it on the night before. So by you saying that, so on the flip side, the positive is by not hitting it, it's your first step in confidence building that day. Every morning, you know, find something you can do that's like hard. And for a lot, it is not hitting the snooze and then anchor that as I'm a badass. I just didn't hit my snooze. <laughs> little wins. Yes, little, little wins. wins. Yeah. So going on to that topic, I mean, I've had the luxury of, of knowing Amy for a number of years now and, and seeing her personally develop as well as her business develop, as well as her, her family develop, um, as well as some of the struggles that she's gone through personally. And um, like it's inspired me to do the little things, but also let's talk about your your kids and the next generation, how you've kind of got them on board. Oh yeah. Well, you know, it started, I think really last year, Eric and I did 75 hard. And while we'd been disciplined before, I'd already been doing a morning and evening routine. I'm pretty quiet and not really sharing a lot of that with the kids. And 75 hard was something where we did 75 days of a hundred percent. I mean, this was like no cheats, a gallon of water, two 45 minute workouts. One had to be outside. Um, take a picture, which we learned it was about the power of intention. The picture didn't matter. It was that you had to remember to do it. Um, and you know, a series of things. And the rule with 75 hard is, is if you fail, you have to start back over at day one. So when Eric and I decided to go all in on it, it was, you know, March, we knew we would miss our anniversary. We canceled our trip even to Mexico. So we're like, if we're going to go all in on this and, and we were told prior to this, that listen, this will build confidence. So we told our kids about it and they just started seeing again the modeling and what it was doing to us and we were teaching them that you know it is about the quiet wins that you know it's not about what other people see it's about what you feel and it's about you keeping your daily promises and so from there we've just you know it's like our family knows now that it's about keeping your word and what you say you're gonna do 
Because if you can't keep your word with yourself, you're definitely not keeping your word with others. And so they've they've had to just, you know, I mean, learn for themselves, like what it feels like to do hard things. You know, our kids, like one of their affirmations, I do hard things, you know, <laughs> and which is so funny. I mean, now they're actually coming out, ironically enough. So my three little ones are, I mean, I have five in-house, 21, 17, um, 11, 10, and 9. Yeah. And the 9, 10, 11 year old, they, she's nine now. Yeah. Wow. She'll, she'll turn nine ne- next month. But she, um, they are baby, which is crazy. They, um, they listen to a teenager that's a personal development coach and he's teaching them right now online marketing, which is so funny. So our kids came to us and they're like, we want to create a product that we can sell to other little kids. And we're like, well, what can you guys do? So they're building like these affirmations and like a whole little course because they've learned like their confidence through it. And it's been so awesome to see them come and be like, well, mom, um, this is like the power of intention. And they learned the law of attraction. And I think it's like, it's never too young to let your kids, you know, get into that. And now they have morning routines. Like right now they're doing a little thing for 15 days and they created themselves. It was create. It's three habits that you want to keep long term and you have to do 15 days in a row you know or else you got to start over so it really becomes a habit so all and you get to pick your own because we're really big on you got to eventually it's strategy but it be, in the beginning it's all about belief in yourself and so start with the tiny little wins it might be um, you know so like Leilani hers is she has to do her morning routine she and she created her own she does like 10 push-ups she makes her bed brushes her teeth right away She also, one of hers is to drink a gallon or two liters of water. She has two liters of water. And then um, they do like 15 minutes of activity or something. It can be any activity. And they're really big on seeing that even at night. I mean, I have a video where I did get a lot of crap for it at first because when they see the video of her, she was crying. So last year, my kids did what was called five for 50. We created, it was 50 days of five habits. Well, I was out of town and Lots of, you know, when routine gets out of its order, you know, normal, that's when we can slip up, right? And so by the end of the night, Eric was, he was FaceTiming me and she'd realized that she'd not done her outdoor walk and that she had not done her three servings of fruits and vegetables. Like she still needed a a vegetable and a fruit and uh, she was sobbing, like so upset. And some people were like, wow, I mean, don't you think that's a little bit rough? But it was her own upset. Yeah, she, you didn't it, make it. It, it mattered to her and it was cute to see her. I mean, yeah, it sucks. She went out at 10 o'clock with Eric. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> she's eating a pepper yeah, yeah. and a banana. And she's like, <laughs> but she felt, but it was the feeling she got after that and really talking to her about that and how good it felt that she felt followed through she could have lied people do it all the time we did a spartan race two years ago and i watched a lady lie over her burpees and me and kamele had a moment of i go you know she won't feel good at the end of this it's a it's a fake you know feeling good right but it, it, you know teaching that and and you know now our whole family i mean i don't think any of us can really mess up i mean kai my oldest he's like hey i'm doing i'm on two weeks of you know, no, no pop. And I go, what made you do that? And he's like, I just want to do just to kind of prove that I can, you yeah. know? So <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it, and I think like it's, it's um, like, it's so nice to have that kind of uh, like team camaraderie as well as like being in a family and um, having someone to kind of rely on and also keep you accountable. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard enough to keep yourself accountable. And I think like one of the things that I've kind of, um, done with it with coaching and not coaching is I want to make sure that I can keep myself accountable before I pay someone to keep myself accountable yes um and I think like you can't you have that has to you have to have that yes right? for sure build that up you have to you know stop saying no or stop hitting snooze and you have to you have to want to do it and kind of earn that I mean we've paid for coaching over all the years and I we've had places we just we just hired someone recently to take us through a specific system but we didn't do it until We had X, Y, Z in place. Like that was like our proof. Like we got to prove to ourselves that we're at a place where we can utilize this person. I mean, coaches need coaching all the time. I mean, we we sometimes have personal trainers that hire us and they're like, I feel bad that I'm hiring. I'm like, why? Sometimes that extra level, you know, um, and our, and, and money is our highest form of commitment. So I always tell people, I want this to be a sacrifice for you because if it is a sacrifice for you, the chances on the other side is you'll follow through. Totally. You know, the most expensive coaching I've probably ever had, I've been like, we are doing this 100%, <laughs> you know? And how, how have you found the coaching? Like, because you did um, Ed Milet and Andy Frizzella's. 
Um, and, uh, you know, you keep saying that it's been great, but do you want to get into that just a little bit? Yes, I think, you know, I, and I had someone on my podcast that we talked about paying for friends and it's like a trigger for people because the title of it was I paid for my friends and people are like, you paid for your friends? I think, you know, and talking to Ed Milet, he always says that, you know, the biggest thing for him has been associations, meaning you are the sum of the five people you're around, the five things you listen to, the five, you know, things you eat, like you really are the sum of all that you do and listen to. So we knew that if we wanted to level up our mindset, I needed to be around other people. So while yes, what Andy and Ed taught us was phenomenal, it was the collaboration of the group. We were around 50 other seven, eight and nine figure earners that we were like, man, we've been dreaming small. Like we've literally been dreaming small. And then from there, I, we've been in several masterminds, which, you know, mastermind is same thing. You've got a facilitator that's the coach, but it's also the collaboration of the group. And I think for years we didn't collaborate with people and we didn't realize that, you know, it's collaboration over competition, that I will have the same exact type of coach on my podcast, no threat at all, because I realize I'm in abundance mindset. There's more than enough to go around. Like you could totally go in and partner with on your drive with another plumber and it would not hurt your business at all. And I think that's where like that lack mindset for people. And I had to learn that through being around, you know, coaching. I think that everyone should have a coach, to be honest, just because I've been able to be around in the last three years, our circles completely changed, like completely. And you realize that your mindset changes because the people you're talking to and seeing and surrounding yourself, they've got that same growth mindset. You know, you can't, and then you're, you're less likely to fail because you've got that to help you on the days that you're not feeling. You're like, man, this guy over here is crushing it. So I'm showing up today. <laughs> you know, yeah. my, my podcast literally was like, we have accountability where he makes us stand up at the meeting. One, you have to say what your goals are and that they have to be done by the time we meet next time. You have to, and then you have a, a wager. It can be either something that you are you know, getting rid of or something you're gaining. So it could be like, well, and when I reach my goal, I'm going to Mexico. Or when I, if I don't reach the goal, I got to sell my favorite purse and they make us put the wager. And then when we show up next time, we have to be accountable to that. And it's been really powerful because you're like, I I mean, my podcast, I'm like, I have to get this out because these people, we all have our own doubts. I think that's what, you know, people forget is that they think that, you know, you're so successful. You don't, you don't struggle. Are you kidding me? Like we still sabotage, we still doubt what we're imposter syndrome, you know? So having other people around you, having a coach that believes in you is massive. You know, it's really helped us over the last three years really just scale, not just financially, but I mean, just in our own personal life, because on the outside, it always looks good. And for Eric and I, it was like that just even helped us personally get through a lot of our own insecurities in in business, like together, because we were kind of competing sometimes, not realizing it, you know? Well, and I think that's totally normal when you have two entrepreneurial minds and especially like connecting so often. Yeah. Yeah. so let's talk about the podcast. So uh, F it. Um, <laughs> um, F it is the name of the podcast. Tell the, tell the listeners yeah, a little bit about it because I think it's fantastic. It, you know, first it was, a, I wanted it to be a little bit of a trigger for my mom. I come from a really strict religious background. So I knew that even that would originally be like, mom, she was like, F it, really? I'm like, no, it's about faith, family, forgiveness, food, fitness, and formula. And really what it is, is I, I teach a course on creating your future self, um, going through my cancer journey. And, um, you know, tension is your test. Like hard times are really when you see what you're made of. And so, you know, being told a term with a terminal type cancer, I really had to learn to control my mind because when I would wake up in the morning, I could either go to fear or I could go to faith. And my fear at first was really controlling me. And then I would show up at, you know, cancer, um, to my chemo. And I would see that there's two types of people. There's like the victim and there's the victor and the victim struggles and they're in more pain, whether I could be on the same medication as them. And because I'm refusing to accept it, I'm refusing to do that. So that's where the podcast came from is just, I wanted a platform where one, I'd bring on other guests 
But two, um, I do a lot of shorter five to 10 minute ones because I'm big on the daily software update. Like every day I'm downloading stuff into my brain to show up as my best self because I want to sleep in, you know, there's so many days where I would love to just watch Netflix, <laughs> yeah. you know? So it's, it's been a lot of fun, you know, and, and just leaning into, you know, was something I had on my vision board two years ago. And I was like, you know, one of those, you're, you want to do it, but you're kind of afraid and you feel like you're an imposter. So it was fun for me to go through the whole process, just even with my own community. They knew that it was something I wanted to do and, yeah. you know, it's been fun. It's amazing. Yeah. And I think it's important. Like, I mean, I, <laughs> so I wanted to do it because I was listening to Gary Vee. And, um, you know, one of the things is uh, for me, uh, listening to podcasts, I gained so much and I was so thankful and I had so much gratitude towards it. And I was like, wow, like, you know, sometimes one of the things for me was that um, I have the ability personally to be able to make a connection with anyone. And like we talked about before, like everybody has a sock drawer um, mm -hmm. to kind of put it in pr perspective. But um, a good way that I explain it is, you know, someone that's in, in the NBA and there's a, you know, someone in high school basketball having that, you know, going to meet the NBA player, they might think, well, oh, I can't never get there. But the high school guy playing basketball that goes and sees the college guy and sees, wow, he's only a couple years older. This is what he's doing to get there. Um, being able to make that connection for a lot of people is a lot easier. Um, so doing this locally and having just some amazing people that, you know, you can touch and feel and they're not just on a billboard. I think for a lot of people, it makes it more real and makes it more attainable. Which is then your belief. I mean, I just did a podcast on this that when you have sabotage, the first thing, and we, we have a beautiful thing called Google, yeah. and you can go Google the people that have defied those odds. You know, for me, it was when I was told I had four to six months, I literally Googled. I'm like, I need to find anyone that's had stage four non-small cell lung cancer. I mean, I, there was a local guy here that had the same type of cancer that I did, Rob DeLuca, that oh, wow. overcame, right? I found him. And so that allowed my brain to look for belief. So no different with entrepreneurship. Oh, now I know Dan that does this, that came from this, I can do it too, yeah. you know? And so I love that you do the same thing. It's, it is to bring other people and your impact is much wider now, right? Because then you can have, anyone can tune in from anywhere. Yeah. And if, I mean, it, like I said, if it, if it just ends up being me and you listening to it ourselves, that's fine too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's it's re therapy. Reliving a great conversation. <laughs> yeah. um, well, that's, uh, thank you so much, Amy, for being on the thank show. Thank you for having me. Um, we're going to have all her bios. And if you have any, uh, any intention of getting into some better shape yeah. and, uh, you know, getting, uh, she's going to be hard on you though. <laughs> you know, you can't cheat. Yeah. Um, we'll have all the links in her bio. And, uh, one of the things we always want to ask each other is, is, is why not me and why not now? Um, I think it, it has so much to do with whether it's fitness, whether it's health, whether it's lifestyle, whether it's a business, especially going through some challenging times, going through cancer. Um, you know, being a cancer survivor, I can only imagine um, some of the, the, the personal strengths that you've built up through that. Yeah, totally. It is. It's And it's all mindset, right? And yeah. belief in yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's wild. So thank you so much, Amy, for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And uh, to everybody tuning in, all her links will be in the bio. And uh, see you next time.